Hello everybody, I'm Jay Leonard J, and these are all the things that I learned after gigging exclusively with Fender Jazz Masters for an entire year. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Tone Lab, which is like my favorite series to do here on the page because I, I guess I get to impart the, all the things that I've learned in terms of how I get the sounds out of my gear, how I set things up to work with my style, as well as I guess take you in on my musical journey. Um, I'm constantly, with all the stuff that I'm playing and constantly learning and people I talk to, all my preconceived notions about gear are constantly being smashed. And, and I'm learning so many new things daily and, and just being able to share all of that knowledge with you uh, is really, really wonderful. And uh, hopefully it helps you on your tonal journey. And today I'm gonna share with you this, this little journey that I've been on for the last year. And that was my journey on really, like actually deep diving and getting to know the Fender Jazz Master. Uh, a Fender Jazz Master is a guitar that I've always loved the aesthetics and the look, and I love the sound, I love the players that play them, but I, you know, I've played a few and, you know, had them come around in and out of my life, but I've never did the deep dive, really got to, to understand the guitar. And that all changed uh, last year, actually a year ago, uh, when this got on the bench. It's a 1966 American Vintage II reissue Fender Jazz Master. In fact, it's an early production model with the tiny headstock. Actually, it's supposed to be bigger to be more period correct, but uh, they fixed it, not on the early ones, so I guess this is kind of a rare bird now, but um, playing this guitar, I was, you know, it was so different than some of the other guitars I had. It was really unique and incredibly fun. I've always kind of been intimidated by jazz masters from some of the things I read online. And playing it, I was like, you know, some of these things aren't quite true. So I said, you know, I'm gonna spend the year you know, put the other guitars up on the rack, spend the year getting to know them. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I even went down the rabbit hole and got another one. And this actually is the one that I've been doing 99% of the gigging with. Uh, this is a custom shop version in uh, faded Fiesta Red, which I guess looks like like the, the eraser on a pencil. So I'm gonna call it eraser pink. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so what I'm gonna do here, I'll break down things really detailed, the sound, where I feel like it excels, where my expectations have been um, broken and where it's been, ex you know, uh, enforced, you know? So uh, let's dig in, Wait, let's just dig in right into it. Uh, this guitar is the follow-up to a Strat and uh, even though it looks really big, it actually has the same scale length. And when you have it on the lap, it actually feels very, very familiar. It feels like if you're used to that offset, Strat body with the contours, it's like that on 10, even more. And I would say this might be one of the most lovely balanced guitars. It never wants to go up like this, never wants to go down like this. It always sits perfectly on the knee. It's, it's wonderful. And I never feel cramped when I'm playing up here. The ergonomics are outstanding. Standing or sitting, um, they, they really knocked it out of the park. Beautiful, beautiful feel. <laughs> So when it comes to the pickups and the electronics, they have two pickups and they are kind of like, if you got a Strat pickup, made it out of Play-Doh and squashed it. So it's really, really short and incredibly wide. Like look at all of that. It's, it's really picking up a huge section of the string here. And what I find when you're doing this with the pickup, you're getting kind of an opposite thing from a P90, where a P90 is really barky, mid-rangey and like, you know, powerful. This is actually incredibly wide and clear. Lots of lows, lots of highs, really neutral in the mids. And the output is about the same as the Strat, to be honest. Uh, let's go hear what it sounds like. You could really hear the highs when I'm on that neck pickup. Here's everything on 10. So incredibly hi-fi, so like wide. Now, when we get to the bridge pickup though, um, there's not as much bass information. So when I get to that bridge pickup, those like trebles really take over. Ooh, that's so bright. And that's the first thing I learned about Jazz Masters. My first tip for all Jazz Master users is don't be afraid of those controls. I personally am a, like a leave everything on 10 guy. And when you're playing like the older electronic jazz masters, run that tone knob down. I actually have my tone knob now 
at four and a half, and I actually think that's where it sounds perfect. Check this out. This is the neck. You still have lots of clarity, uh, but it just kind of tames the ultra shrillness on it. Here's the middle position with the tone at four and a half. the bridge position. Absolutely lovely. That's where you got to have it. Now, a lot of people get good sounds all on 10, uh, but I really do like to roll things off. Um, the, the, the actual pots themselves are very different than a Strat 2, where a Strat uses 250K pots. Gibson's use 500K. These are one meg. So again, it's it's almost like not having a pot there at all. That's why all of that sound is getting through. That's why all of those bright little trebles are coming through. It's a very, very wide thing that leads to lots of expression, totally reinforcing the fact that you gotta take advantage of those knobs. <laughs> And because of the wide nature of these pickups, you could even roll things down like I'm gonna be at two on the neck pickup and you're still gonna get, you know, you're gonna get warmth and fullness, but you're gonna get lots of separation still. Whereas like a Gibson guitar, you know, when you're rolling it down that much, it starts getting muddy, it still keeps clear. And I guess that's the, the designist idea, right? Like jazz masters, that you're supposed to get a jazz sound, but it's like jazz sound with just a little bit more clarity. It's really lovely. Now, things get very different, however, when you start adding gain. So I'm gonna add a little bit of gain and you can hear like that edge to it, that clarity, it's still, cuts through, it cuts through like no other. I'm still at four and a half, and let's hear that bridge pickup. You hear that amount of edge, it's really, really strong. It's so punchy and so in your face, that sizzle at the beginning of the attack. It's almost like uh, the guitar does not want to be distorted. It's fighting the gain from my amp and it's like a battle of clean versus overdrive and clean's kind of winning as it's just really edgy. Whereas like you're playing a, a Les Paul, the, the, the guitar almost kind of succumbs to the gain and it becomes really harmonically rich and smooth and creamy, exact opposite with this guitar. <laughs> You really hear yourself with it, but again, you're not gonna get that like smooth 80s lead. And that was one thing I really noticed when I was playing with this thing live. Um, if I was trying to get like an 80s rock guitar tone, um, you know, I would try to, to lower the tone knob quite a bit to kind of smooth things out. But even then, that clarity and that precision still remains. And, uh, you know, I would have to kind of change the kind of uh, distortion pedals is used. I'd pick distortion pedals that had a little bit more low mid content, smoothed out the trebles a lot more than I normally would with my gain knobs. Um, the the concept of like, you know, Gibson SG Proco Rat fat kind of sound, uh, that doesn't really work here. When I put a Proco Rat here, it really highlights the, the upper edge of things, make it more trashy and zippy and everything like that. So um, if you're going for that classic rock sound, smooth liquid lead lines, uh, this probably might not be the thing for you. In fact, one thing to also note is uh, this guitar 
hums, like because of these such wide pickups, it hums about as much as a P90. But the difference is P90s have about double the amount of volume. So actually, uh, it, it has this perceived feeling of a lot more hum. Like when you compare it to a Strat, it's much more hummy, um, even though they're about similar output. So when you're starting to add gain, the hum becomes more you know, apparent and, and really takes over. So it's something you have to be really, really careful when you're playing with high gain. Now, however, where you know it, it doesn't really cream out when you're putting the gain on, it becomes actually an asset when you're using it with fuzz pedals. I find, um, especially something like a fuzz face, when they're full blast, they can get quite mushy and like kind of like kind of woofy sounding. But because of the extra cut on the Jazzmaster, I find it to be perfectly mated for fuzz. So if fuzz is your main um, means of, over, uh, of distortion, I think you will really dig it. Check this out. <laughs> That's why a lot of fuzz uh, or shoegaze players, you know, like to play jazz masters because they tend to like these really gnarly, fat sounding fuzzes. And I find this guitar is a wonderful complement to it because it keeps that separation intact. Now, um, when it comes to, uh, back to the pots here, um, the taper of the pot is different. This is an, uh, an audio taper pot, which is the same you'd see on any other guitar, but this uses a logarithmic pot and the taper is different. And you'll actually uh, hear it, especially when you're using a fuzz pedal. When you're using a fuzz pedal with like a Strat, I only need to turn down to about eight for it to clean up. Whereas with this, I gotta clean up a little bit more. I'm more around six. Let's hear how that cleanup works. <laughs> So yeah, I'm at about eight right now, whereas it comes pretty immediate with the other taper pot. Um, when you're clean, you'll notice that the, the taper is much smoother with the linear pot as well. I actually like the taper clean. It's really, really smooth. It's really, really even. It's nice. It's not quite as abrupt as it is with the audio taper. Now that's not the only thing going on with the electronics on this guitar. There's an upper section here and that's the rhythm circuit. It bypasses the standard circuit here and turns on the neck pickup and routes it through a different volume and a different tone knob. In this case, the volume is still one meg, but the tone is a 50K and they use a 0.02 capacitor. There's a 0.03 capacitor here. So this is a 0.02. It's gonna be much warmer. People call it the mud switch because it just adds more smoothness to everything. Here's the neck pickup with everything on 10 on the standard circuit. Here's the rhythm circuit. Really smooth, very lovely, very jazzy. That's what I would use it for. I also like using it as an on off switch. I'll turn the volume all the way off. Turn on a fuzz and you could use this to turn off and on your sound like this. Also, because it's so rounded and full on the rhythm circuit, it sounds really neat with fuzz. It kind of gives it like this trombone effect, really lovely.
lovely stuff. So um, one thing you might be wondering is uh, why have I been uh, using this guitar a lot uh, when I actually gig with this guitar more often? And the reason why is because one of the, the big differences between this guitar is actually the wiring of it. This is the stock Jazzmaster wiring, the stock sound you're going to get, where this one is a little bit different. Instead of using one meg pots, like you would see on this guitar, I'm actually using the more standard Strat style 250K pots. And what that is going to do here is kind of smooth out the tone quite substantially. Um, now I could run both at full 10 and uh, still not have that edge to it. It just still has a nice smoothness to it. I really, really love having the 250K pots, especially on the bridge pickup. I think it just smooths thing out uh, in a lovely way. And then the middle pickup. The neck pickup is nice and smooth. Now the question you might be asking is, um, why use 250K pots when say I can get the one make pot and just roll it down till it's 250K? Well, when you do that on the tone knob, it actually works really, really similarly. Like a two, like rolling this to 250K is gonna sound like this at 250K. The only difference is I'm obviously gonna have a little bit more scope here, but it is quite different rolling the volume down to 250K. If I roll this down to 250K, it's gonna be much darker and, and um, it, it, a little bit more, not, not quite as, uh, it just sounds quite different. It's just different sounding. I find that this makes a difference what value it is. Um, when, when this is on 10, um, it, it definitely has this lovely, lovely characteristic to it. But one thing I did miss is I do like the neck pickup when it's with the 250K pots. But sometimes I really miss that extra bit of clarity I get with the one meg pots on this guitar. And so what I did is I switched up the rhythm circuit here. When I switch up here, it now switches to the neck pickup, just like on this guitar. Only difference is instead of getting darker, it gets brighter. I have a one make pot, one make pot. It's just a standard Jazzmaster wiring on the neck pickup. And it gives me just a little bit, slightly more volume, slightly more clarity. <laughs> This is my 250K circuit. I love it with distortion. It sounds great because it has punch on that neck pickup when I'm in the one meg side. I think that sounds great, and that's how I love to have my Jazz Masters done. Um, it's a wonderful mod where I feel like I get the best of both worlds. Uh, because, again, I never really run this at full bore, so having everything preset to 250K, I could just turn everything up, and I'm exactly where I want to be. I, I really, really like this mod. Um, things I really enjoy about the Jazz Master tone is I love the way it sounds. Um, just arpeggiating chords. Because of that clarity on the guitar, I find it really sounds great with arpeggios, even on the bridge pickup.
that separation is lovely, especially when you're on the neck pickup. It's still smooth, but lots of clarity. <laughs> Even though when I'm with distortion and I'm hitting like little riffs, it might sound really like kind of overly bright and overly punchy when I'm doing it clean, that edge really makes clean riff rock really nice. Like those lovely old school like. <laughs> They hit different than they do with a Strat or a Tele. I love this guitar as a rhythm guitar because there's a, a lovely thing about this, the tonality of it that brings everything this, to this like old school Staxy Motowny world that I, I, it's it's a little bit different than what we're used to. I'm so used to the sound of a Strat and a Tele. Hearing this with the rhythm is just a lovely thing. <laughs> It's a really lovely rhythm guitar. It's really lovely for like those clean lines and everything like that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now let's go over to the tremolo system, which I think is the highlight of the instrument. It has an absolutely beautiful vibrato system. Um, it is so smooth and so responsive to my playing. I'm not a dive bomb guy. I like to have it for shimmering, like adding a little bit of texture to my chords and stuff. And for that, I think it's the best. I always love the Bigsby, but I will say this might edge the Bigsby out in terms of its control, um, the amount of bend I'm getting with it. It's just so lovely, so smooth. I don't dive bomb. Like, I don't think it would dive bomb very well, but just getting nice wacky. <laughs> I feel so in control and, and it gives me just the right amount. I also love the fact that it has a lock. There's a lock here. And if you have this guitar set properly, it's a godsend because say you break a string on a Strat Live, your guitar goes completely out of tune. But with this, you break a string and then you reset it and lock it here. What happens is it puts your guitar back in tune. So you're missing a string, you're still able to Whammy, you can't whammy up. You could only whammy down now, but at least it'll get you through until you could change the string. I don't know why all guitars don't have this, especially for someone like me that's constantly breaking strings. Now, the way it works here is when I move the whammy, the, the actual bridge moves with it too. It moves forward and it moves back and it moves forward and it moves back. And that's a, a, a unique system because everything's moving together, there's no friction. And I think that's what's leading to that nice smoothness and that nice feel that I'm getting. Nothing's gripping onto anything. And tuning stability wise, it's incredibly stable. Actually, I'm using vintage tuners on both of these guitars, uh, bone nut and you know, I didn't even, there's no shim in any of these guitars. Um, so I'm actually just running it without the shim. And the tuning has been incredibly rock solid. I was actually nervous because I've heard a lot of horror stories about stability on these guitars, but absolutely not a problem at all. They're like really surprisingly wonderful. 
Some people say that these get a little bit out of alignment, like they might get stuck forward or stuck backwards. Um, after a year playing, and I'm a very, very aggressive player, I have not had that problem. Um, one thing to note though, is some people like to put, um, what do you call it, a little bit of lubrication on the saddles. That's not what you do with these movable bridges, because what, what's happening is, say you move this forward and it bends this way, if you move it back and there's lubrication, the string might move back and it might stay there. You need the friction to go back and forth like this. So don't put any lubrication. I, I don't do that. This is the uh, this is the custom shop master, or not the mastery bridge, this is the custom shop fender bridge. This is absolutely beautiful. It holds on really, really nice and it's rock solid. The tuning's absolutely beautiful. Um, now with this guitar, I changed the bridge. Um, the stock bridge um, is, is fine. Um, it rocked back and forth. I wasn't having any issues of it sliding or getting stuck or anything like that. Um, and I wasn't having any rattling issues with it when I was setting it up. Um, I did put a little bit of Loctite on the, on the uh, saddle adjustments on the older bridge just to be sure, but, but when I did that, it was rock solid. The reason why I switched to the mastery bridge on this guitar is because uh, I did notice when you're using the stock Jazzmaster bridge that the strings would sometimes come off of the saddle. And uh, especially when I'm hitting really hard because it's a very, very subtle angle here. Really, really subtle angle. So this, the string would just pop off and it was getting a little frustrating. Um, so I found that either a Mustang bridge held it really, really well. I had this mastery bridge, it holds it on exceptionally well. And then this one uh, with the custom shop bridge, no problem at all, no problem at all. Um, the mastery bridge does not rock back and forth, so you can put some lubrication on it. Um, and I find this to be an absolutely wonderful thing. Um, this adds more sustain. There is noticeable more sustain uh, with the mastery or the, uh, the custom shop bridge, but it's not as much as you might think. It's, it's, but it, it definitely is there, a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more alive. It's a, it's a highly recommended mod. I really do feel like uh, changing out the stock Jazz Master Bridge, if, um, either to a Mustang bridge to prevent pop-outs or using uh, the Custom Shop Bridge here or this Mastery Bridge to get the stability and a little extra sustain. It goes a long, long way. <laughs> So it holds up really well in tune live. That was a big surprise for me, but let's talk about string breakage. Um, I am known for breaking tons of strings. I break strings constantly to the point where I, I pretty much have to change my strings out every second gig. It's that bad. And I break all kinds of strings, Ds mostly, Es, As, everything. I, it's just the, the nature of my poppy technique. Um, it, really, it really leads to a lot of breakage. It's always breakage around the bridge. And I will say, maybe because of this really shallow break angle in the back, playing a jazz master for the last year, I do not break strings anymore. And it's been probably for the first time in my life. <laughs> and like the, it's amazing. I don't have to worry about, I'm really good at changing strings live and uh, on the spur of the moment. Uh, but man, like having that free of mind that the string is not going to break, it's been wonderful. I think I only broke one the entire year I'm, and I'm not even changing strings. This is weird. Like I have to constantly change strings because I'm constantly breaking strings um, and putting fresh sets. So the fact that I could actually let a set break in, that's something I never do because my guitar playing style won't let me do it. I don't break strings on Jazz Masters. So if you are a habitual string breaker like me, I highly recommend the switch here. I really do. And people do say because of the, uh, the slow break angle, you're gonna get a lot of sympathetic vibrations coming through your tone. I don't really notice that, actually, to be honest. You can play with the, with the back though, like. stuff. Now, um, in terms of string breaking though, I'm going to put a little asterisk here because I was getting a string breaking issue on this guitar. On this guitar, I noticed that I was breaking tons of strings right here, like tons. 
Um, at first, I thought it was uh, the uh, screws here that were making contact with the string. So I actually flipped these screws upside down to prevent maybe the top of this screw to touch the string and maybe that friction's what's breaking it. That didn't fix it. But what did, and I tried to, uh, you know, take, you know, a smoothing tool and kind of smooth out the hole here. And that actually helped quite a bit. That helped out quite a bit. But the thing that I found helped out the most was just getting a little bit of solder and putting it on the wind of the high E string, just the high E string. And then now I'm not breaking strings here at all at the bridge. Uh, that being said, with this guitar, that's not an issue at all. I haven't had to do any soldering for this string. Um, so maybe it might be there's some kind of burr that I didn't find yet on the other guitar, um, but I have had people make that comment before of breaking strings. I use 10 to 48 and I do notice that down here on this, the American uh, reissue, I do break here. On the custom shop, no, uh, I don't, I don't. That's not a problem for me at all. In terms of my setup specs, um, I have my action at about uh, maybe just a hair over one sixteenth of an inch on the high e uh, on the with the high e string on the twelfth fret, and the same thing on the low e string. Um, it's about the same on both guitars. Um, I also have the pickups. Um, the neck pickup is much lower than this one. I think I have it four millimeters. If I depress at the last fret, four millimeters on the low e string. Then here it's three millimeters, and then up here it's three millimeters again, and then up here it's about 2.5. And it's about the same on both guitars, maybe give or take a little bit of a turn here and there just to make sure they're balanced. Another change between these two guitars is I put Jason Lawler pickups on here. Um, I, I did it, I was talking to uh, Mike Adams, who's uh, with Pusheen and he does that, he's like the jazz master guy. If you're getting into it, that's the guy you gotta watch. And he was one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Very, very generous, wonderful person. We we're talking about jazz masters because I was taking the deep dive and I know he's really into Novaks and stuff. And he kind of said to me, you know, for my style and the way I play, he recommended the Lawlers. So I said, okay, I'll try them on my guitar. And I put them on here and oh, they're absolutely wonderful. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> So I guess uh, to break everything down, um, what did I learn about the Jazzmaster? I find that it has absolutely brilliant clean sounds. It's a wonderful clean sounding guitar. Um, the neck pickup is probably one of the nicest sounding neck pickups you're ever gonna play in your life. They are noisy compared to the overall output level you're going to be getting. Uh, the bridge pickup has a beautiful unique sound that's great for clean riffs. <laughs> But when you're mixing it with high gain, you're not gonna get to that 80s place. You're not gonna get to that classic rock place. It maintains clarity, it maintains punch. So if you're a percussive player, really articulate, really stabby, you'll like it. But if you're going for like the Santana lines, it's not gonna do it as well. It can do it, but it's not gonna do it as well. Um, there's actually a part of me that was thinking about putting some a P90 in here, you know, just to see what happens. But I don't know. I'm, I do like the bridge. It's a unique sound. Um, and I actually play on it a lot when I'm playing rhythm clean because it has that unique sensibility. It sounds like a Stax album. The vibrato is absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's probably my favorite system. It stays in tune incredibly well, If you, I guess if you have your guitar set up correctly. Um, and, uh, but uh, be wary of the Jazz Master Bridge because uh, the strings may pop off the saddle if you're too aggressive. And in that case, I recommend going for a Mustang Bridge, a Mastery Bridge, or I think there's a couple other companies. Stay Trem makes a wonderful bridge. Um, I don't think you can buy these separately, but this is probably my favorite one. Um, I think uh, for my personal playing, I like using the 250K pots. Actually, the 250Ks were stock in this guitar when I got them. Uh, and the other mod I like to do is to make the neck pickup instead of be a mud switch, it's actually a bright switch where it goes to the standard wiring. I find that that gives me everything that I want out of a Jazzmaster. I can get super clear neck pickups, but the bridge pickup and the in-between pickup are tamed without having to do too much turning. The playability is incredibly comfortable and incredibly wonderful. Um, there is a difference between this guitar. This has a seven and a quarter radius and it has really small frets. Um, so it's rounded and smaller frets. Great for rhythm. I love playing this guitar because even when I squeeze hard, I can't get the tune it out of tune. 
right? Uh, because the frets are so low. So it's great for my hand-fisted technique. Um, the bending is not a problem. I can get huge bends everywhere, except for the high E. I feel like it, I, could, I could get a full note bend or whole note bend, but anything higher than that, I start to choke out a little bit, right? Um, if I had to have it my way though, I do think the more modern nine and a, and a half uh, Quarter, uh, nine and a half inch radius and the slightly bigger frets are great. The bigger frets do make it a little bit easier to bend. And I do feel like I have a little bit more leeway with the radius. But that being said, you know, Jimi Hendrix, John Mayer and Stevie Ray Vaughan and, you know, uh, Mark Knopfler, they're all vintage radius players and they managed to get all the bends on there. So don't make that prevent you from getting another guitar, play it, see if it's comfortable. Especially if you're a rhythm player, you might actually be surprised by how much you like playing the vintage style radius. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, that, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's pretty much it, that's all I got to say. Um, I'm ex excited because this experiment's over, I can start bringing back some of my other guitars, my, uh, my other go-tos back into the rig. Uh, but I'm really happy that I did it, it was a lot of fun. Now, I have a couple questions for all of you, and that is, if you do play a jazz master, what are the things that you do to get certain sounds out of it? What tips would you give me? What have worked for you? Um, I know people put little things here to keep the, the things down. Um, I didn't try that because I'm actually really happy with the way it sets up, but there's a bunch of other things that people do. So write it in the comment section below. And um, hopefully if you're thinking about getting a Jazz Master uh, or you're thinking about trying out a Jazz Master, I hope it gives this video gives you some uh, a nice perspective to approach the guitar with and helps you on your journey and if you're new to it write down um, your experiences with it and how you find discovering the whole instrument it's a wonderful satisfying thing and i guess that's it for the tone lab oh my goodness i guess that being said i'll see you all soon take care and goodbye